time on that about Green Action Center. Um, then I'll be going through the essential things that um, are important to think of when you're building a compost bin, deciding on what type of compost bin you want, or even purchasing a compost bin. Um, I'll talk a little bit about other compost bins you can make yourself, um, where to source the wood for a compost bin you're making, and then we'll get into how to build the bins, and then we'll have time for um, questions after that. Oops. All right, um, Leah gave a little background on our Boat Green Action Center already. Um, we Some of the events that we do that you may be familiar with are Commuter Challenge and the Jack Frost Challenge. So there's uh, popular events that people know quite well. And as Leah mentioned, we um, Mick is a master composter. So part of our composting program is we um, hold a master composter volunteer training course annually. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do it in the past years due to COVID. Um, so basically what that course does is uh, trains folks who are very passionate about, about composting um, <laughs> so that they can educate the public about um, composting on behalf of Green Action Center. So they're a very dedicated group of volunteers and they're an invaluable resource to our composting program. They do a lot for us and hopefully we can get it um, back on again in the course so that we can train even more master composters. Okay, so when deciding on how to make a compost bin, there's, um, or even when buying a compost bin, there are some important things that you should consider so that um, composting is easy and it's successful. You want, in, in regards to the size of a compost bin, the ideal size is around one cubic meter. So that's one meter tall by one meter wide by one meter deep or three feet by three feet by three feet. Um, and this is for this reason, if it's any smaller then you may not, you won't have enough um, material for organic material for things to really um, get really nice and hot um, for that activity to really, that composting activity to get um, uh, nice and productive. And if things, if the, your bin is really big, um, then it can just get hard to handle. It'd be hard to um, turn your compost. Um, you want to make sure that your bin is not too tall as well, because you have to get in there to um, turn your compost or aerate your compost. And if it's really tall, then it's quite difficult to, to reach in there to do that. Unless you're a really tall person, then eh, go for it. That's what that's the great thing about making a bin. You can make it as tall as you as you want or as small as you want or short as you want. Um, and you always want to make sure you have air holes or slats in your compost bin because those little compost critters in the compost pile that do all that decompositional activity, they need oxygen just like we do. Um, what happens is if you don't have um, oxygen in the pile, you'll be get anaerobic conditions, so low oxygen, and that's when things will get really stinky and the decomposition will slow down. So that's another reason why we need to turn or aerate our compost regularly, so you can get the air circulating through the compost pile. Um, lids are nice to have on your bin, you don't need to have them. Uh, they're nice to have if you have a curious dog to keep the dog out or certain other larger <clears throat> animals and a front door or a removable front panel on your compost bin is also really nice to have um, it makes it a lot easier to harvest the finished compost out of the bin um, if you don't have that then you just have to reach over the sides of the bin and shovel the compost out of the bin that way Kristen, can I just can I just make a comment about the lids? Yeah. And uh, if, if if we have community composters on on the webinar, um, wh what we found is if if there's a three bin system, mm -hmm. um, if you do have lids, what you can do is you can padlock the lids down on two of the bins and leave the third bin open. Uh, and what we found with community composting that some people will use the bins as a garbage tip, and they will throw all their refuse into the bin. But if you can padlock the lid down onto the bin, 
then they can't get the garbage in there and you only have one bin to worry about rather than three. And it's a lesson that we learned a few years ago. And so um, in a community composting area, it lids, I think, uh, uh, are probably essential. It, it stops that garbage dumping. Yes, that's very true. That's a really good point. Um, school uh, compost bins will have that too. A lot of people like to dump their dog poo bags into the, the compost bins. It's a not pleasant thing to find. So thanks for that, Mick. And do you have any other thoughts of um, things that are really um, important to have or characteristics to have in a compost bin? Uh, no, I, I like this picture though because there's a there's a wire mesh bin to the left, which is where all the where all the the leaves should be going, and then the, the leaves, which are the browns, would then go straight onto the compost when you add the when you add the greens. So that's a really good system there. It's a good picture. Yeah, I like um, uh, at home. I have a bin holding all my leaves right next to the compost bin, so that it's easy. I like things that are easy. Oh. <laughs> All right, so when deciding on a bin and how many bins you may need, um, it's helpful to consider how much waste you would produce. And also you have to consider how much space you have in your on your property. Um, so in my household, we have two adults, a four-year-old and a one-year-old, and we have um, two, um, earth machines the, I can think of the word for a second it's uh there are those um black plastic bins that are kind of circular um also my two my parents they share our bin with us and it's actually more that it's enough for our needs um we haven't had a winter yet sharing bins a bin with them so we'll see how that goes um you can have a single bin system, so just one bin, or a multi-bin system, two bins, three bins. I personally love having a multi-bin system um, because what you do is, is see in, in this picture right here, you have um, a sign that says add. So this is the active bin. This is where you're adding all your food scraps. Once that fills up, you stop adding food scraps to it and you let the compost pile mature and turn into um, uh, mature compost, finished compost. And that's what's happening in this bin right here that says, with the sign that says don't add, that no one's adding food scraps to that bin. Um, you're just turning it and you're letting the, the pile turn uh, mature into compost. Um, if you have a single bin system, what happens is if you're adding food scraps, um, the materials at the bottom will usually be, that's where that's will turn into, the stuff at the bottom will be the most mature uh, material. So um, you'll, your finished compost will be at the bottom of the bin, whereas at the top of the bin, you'll have food scraps and unfinished compost. So when you go to harvest it, you'll have to just shovel out the bottom portion contents of the bin. Whereas if you have a multi-bin system, once that that full bin is nicely finished compost, you can just shovel everything out. So it makes it a lot easier. But if you don't have enough space and you only have a space for one bin, then you do what, what you can. Okay, something else that's really important is where to locate your bin on a property. Um, for me, you always want to make sure it's easily accessible. If it's something hard to get to, and it's going to be, you're going to get, you want to make composting easy. If it's not easy, then you're going to get discouraged and may not continue doing it. Um, you especially want to think about that for winter time. You don't want to have to trudge through a lot of deep snow or have to shovel a really long path to uh, the compost bin. So maybe don't have it super far away from your house. I don't like to have it right next to my house, um, just because if you don't um, tend to your compost bin enough, like if it dries out and it's um, not very hot in there, then you can get mice. Um, so I just like to keep it further away from my, my house. Um, the best place to put a bin is on grass or dirt. Um, the reason for that is that you want all those nice microorganisms and worms and insects 
in the soil to go into your bin to do all the decomposition. Um, so if you have it on the grass or the dirt, they'll just travel into your bin. Another reason is if um, it gets really wet in there, um, the water will leach out of the bin and will soak into the, uh, the soil. So on concrete, it's not the best place to have it. Um, but if you do, you can just add some soil to the, the bin uh, to get those microorganisms into the compost bin. Um, part sun is ideal if you have it, but it's not crucial. Um, if you have it in a sunny spot, fully sunny spot, the compost pile will tend to dry out a lot more. Um, if it's in a very shaded spot, the sun won't help to warm up the compost pile. But that, again, that doesn't really matter because it's the bacteria in the compost pile that's really heating things up in there. Um, you really want to make sure you have a water source nearby because your compost pile will dry out and you will need to add some water. And the last thing is to think about how visible is it to your neighbors? Because some people get a little squeamish about composting. Um, they worry it's going to be smelly or it's going to attract mice or they don't like how it looks. So depending on your neighbors, um, you may have to, you may hide it a little more. Um, or it could also use it as a good uh, teachable moment about um, composting. Let me know if you have anything you want to add, Mick. Oh, your hand was up. Yeah, so 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 I read a, a, a composting book that was uh, uh, from America, and it was very interesting. Um, what one of their suggestion was that in your garden, if you have an area where you know that the soil is in really in poor condition, then put your compost bin or your compost pile right on top of that soil, mm. and, and by by adding all the compostable materials. You, you will, it's a food source for, for living um, bacteria and earthworms and all the rest of the things that we, we love so much. And they will mi migrate to that area and start, start um, turning that compost, making compost for you. And, and then instead of you wheelbarrowing the compost over to the area where you need it, the actual compost is being made in, in poor conditions. And I know it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but it actually works. So. You're, you're, you're composting in an area that's got poor soil conditions in the hope that, you're, that the, the, the shredders and the microbes and all the rest of it are gonna migrate there and, and turn it into compost. And it seemed a really, really good suggestion to me. So um, just, I'll put that out there. Especially if you've got a, la a large yacht, uh, a, a large lot, then um, put, put the compost bin where you know the soil needs improving the most. That's a really interesting idea. Yeah. And and as you said, then you don't have to transport the finished compost as far as well. Hmm. Again, making things easier. I like it. <laughs> um, so we're going to be showing you how to make two different types of wooden compost bins, but there's tons of different other com types of compost bins you can make on your own. Um, a, well, that's what's so great about compost bins. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can use materials that you already have on hand um, that makes it cheaper, more environmentally friendly. Um, as you can see here, there's a chicken wire bin. You just make a chicken wire, very simple. Um, you can actually make a bin out of a garbage can. Um, so you just drill holes into it. Some people actually did, um, take the bottom, cut the bottom off the garbage can and then uh, dig a bit of a hole into the soil and then stick part of the garbage can in the, the soil. Um, some other people um, suggest kind of making it into a tumbler bin a bit. So you just roll it around to turn the contents, make sure you have the lid on. Um, then there's a two or three bin system where you can have a lot bigger bin. Um, you tend to find these in community gardens. I've seen some without lids and without um, front panels and they tend to be a lot bigger too. You can make those out of pallets as well. Um, you can make your own tumbler bin and wooden wire bin. So we have building plans for the wooden wire bin and the top three bins on our website. Um, you can just Google DIY tumbler bin and tons of resources come up. Um, and then there's also, I've seen 
cinder block compost bins as well. We have a lot of us tend to have those lying around um, and it's really simple to make and they have holes already. So um, that's a great way to use cinder blocks just lying around. Again, I found this on the internet. So just Google that and you'll find a lot of resources. And I've noticed, Mick, have you made, I've even seen um, people using um, snow fences to you to make compost bins as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's um, when you look at compost bin building, it's it's whatever the local resources that there's the most of that's free, then try and build a bin out of it. That would be. Yeah. 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 You don't have to break the bank. No. No. <clears throat> All right. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about where to get. Um, I guess reclaimed wood or wood that you can reuse um, and pallets are a great uh, wood source for that so as you'll see later on Mick used pallets for both um, compost bins that he made so we have um, at Green Action Center we have a list of places where you can get pallets from um, we haven't updated recently so I will say I don't know um, if these places still do have pallets available, but um, they have phone numbers that you can call to, to see if they do still have pallets. And um, Mick, you were saying that you get pallets from Rona, is that correct? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving away my free source here. So, uh, so Rona, <laughs> Was I supposed Rona, to tell Rona, the secret? <laughs> yeah. So Rona, uh, and, and Rona and Lowe's and, and Home Depot, um, uh, sometimes get uh, plants in from British Columbia and, and when they, they ship, they ship in cedar crates. So mm -hmm. it'll be a pallet that's a bottom pallet, which is normal. And then they build a shelving pallet on top, which is normally around six feet high and then cedar shelves in there. And it's grade two cedar. So it's not premium wood floor cedar, but it's, it's good enough to build a bin from. And um, I, I, I have a contact at Rona on um, St. Matthews and, and they allow me to take all of the, of the cedar bins away and, and I can build it, build bins from reclaimed cedar, uh, which is way, way cheaper than buy, uh, building a bin from cedar that you purchase. Yeah. So uh, go, go to your local garden centers and see, see what they've got there. Um, uh, normally they just throw these, these in the skip. They throw them in the garbage can or in the garbage bin. So ask them. And uh, yeah, ask before you take, and then uh, nine times out of 10, they'll let you take them. Yeah, you know, if they're going to go to the garbage, I'm sure they'd be willing to, to give them away. Um, and you'll see in the video that we're going to be showing um, that you want to make sure that the pallets aren't treated um, and that they're heat treated. So I think no, you can't see. I thought there was. A, well, you'll see in the video the the heat treated um, symbol on the uh, the pallets. Oh, and Mick, didn't you have a good tip for the best, like how to do? You take apart the pallets on site and then put them into your truck so you can load more onto your truck at once. Yeah, for for the cedar ones. So so basically, it's it's three sides, uh, three tall sides. So what I do is I knock the back out of, of the tall pallet and then push the two sides apart. And then I can load them in six foot sections into, into my truck, which is way easier than trying to take a 42 foot square by six foot high pallet, you know, complete in, in one go. So that's the way I do it. it. It took me a few goes to figure out the best way, mm. but that's the easiest way for me because I have an eight foot trailer and then I can just stack them up in the trailer in sections. Mm. Nice, yeah. That's, that's great. Um, okay, so these are the compost bins. Um, on the left hand photo, we have the simple wood pallet bin. And on the right hand photo, we have the more elaborate wood bin with the lid and a door, front door. So the simple, Mick, do you want to talk about the this wood pallet bin, or do you want me to go? Uh, sure, I, I I can do it. So um, sure. yeah. So so they're very quick and easy to make. I think I think we made this one in less than five minutes, didn't we, Kristen? Yeah. That's 
Yeah. So inexpensive, <laughs> yeah. very, very inexpensive. So, so basically you need, um, uh, you need uh, four brackets and some screws and, and some rope. So inexpensive, um, you just need a power drill and a screwdriver. Um, if you want to go a little bit fancy, then you can um, go four hook and eye gate latches. And, and you maybe need a saw if you need to trim the pallets down. But it's the simplest, simplest compost bin to make. So if you can find um, four pallets that are in good condition, um, you, you might need an extra one just in case there's a few planks that are, uh, that, that are sort of dodgy. But uh, you'll just need four pallets. And, and literally five minutes later, you've, you've got a compost bin. Yeah, I was actually really surprised um, by how quick and easy it was. So yeah, it was, it was pretty neat to see. All right. Um, so that brings us to the video. Um, the video of this, the making of this bin is about six minutes long. Um, so I'm just going to get to the video and I will share my screen. I'm going to stop sharing this screen. screen while I get the video on. Oops. Uh, so today we're going to build uh, the most basic of compost bins uh, using four pallets that are not pressure treated. So these are good pallets. On the side of the pallet there's a stamp that says HT and HT stands for heat treating. So these pallets are good to use for a compost bin. I don't like to use painted pallets or any pallets that have been pressure treated. So to assemble the bin, the easiest way to do it is to buy four two inch clamps, right angle clamps like this. And then you'll need some screws, at least an inch long. And obviously a screwdriver. So when we build the bin, the right angle brackets go in the corners and the trick is to find an area where two of the planks line up. So on this bin, this side, we're going to put a clamp there, like this. And then we're going to put a clamp further down, like this. And that holds the bin together. Okay. So then you just line that up, like that. And then I'll... So the pictures on the Green Action web website show the slats going vertically. So these slats on this bin are going horizontally. It's really a matter of personal choice, but I prefer horizontal slats rather than vertical slats. Just uh, an FYI. Why do I prefer it? Because when, when I build a compost pile, I build it from the middle out. And so as the compost compresses down, it fills, it fills the compost bin. If, if the slats are the, are the other way up, the, the compost doesn't settle properly in the bin. That's my experience. The, the simplest way to finish the bin is to just put four ropes, um, two at the top and two at the bottom. Uh, just tie them so the knot is at the back of the, the back of the pallet. And then we, we put the door on the front and then we just secure the door with the rope. Very simple. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here we have the, 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 the last piece of the bin, which is, which is the door for the bin. So to access the compost, we would just undo the ropes and then we can move into the bin and we can turn the compost. There's some other options. We could put hook and eyes on the corners and we could actually use the hook and eyes to secure the, the door. Or we could put a hinge on there. We can put a hinge, there's enough space to, to put a heavy duty hinge and we can swing the door out and then we can latch it the other side. The simplest way is just to use some rope. My 
goodness, and it all lined up. It's like I've done this before. So a standard pallet is 42 inches. And, and as you notice, um, this is a tall compost bin. So if you wanted to make it shorter, you would have to trim down the pallets to the next plank down. And that would give you around 36 inches. The reason that we need at least 36 inches is for the volume of the bin to be successful. It needs to be at least one cubic meter or, or one cubic yard. So 36 by 36 by 36 would give you a cubic yard. This is slightly over a cubic yard. And so if you're short, trying to get into this bin will be difficult. So before you build the bin, you would cut the pallets down all the same size to approximately 36 inches and then start building the bin with the 36 inch pallets. So if you notice on this bin, the slats are all spaced differently. Ideally, you need about an inch or an inch and a half between the slats for it to compost effectively. So what you can do is prior to building the bin, if you've got wide spaces, you can fill those slats, fill those spaces in with slats. Or the other option is you can put chicken wire around the inside of the bin and that will prevent anything from falling out in the wide spaces. It's really a personal preference. So this is the simplest and cheapest bin to make because you only need uh, four right angle pieces and some string and some screws. So to build this bin on your own takes around five minutes. So a very simple bin and a very uh, cheap bin to build. All right. Easy peasy. Now, does anyone have any questions about that? Leah, is there any questions about? Uh... No, just um, some great comments. Um, Maureen said she's used wire for the door of the pallet bin and uh, yeah. instead of another, another pallet. But... Yeah, that's what's so great about um, compost bins is you can, as we said before, you can use kind of anything you want yeah you know? exactly yeah. yeah um all right do you have anything you want to add nick i think you covered pretty much oh you're muted you're muted mick there yeah, I'm, go. I'm good i um don't like seeing myself on video but that's fine good <laughs> <laughs> you're a star mick you are great thank you <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to share my screen so that we can start uh, talking about the uh, the next bin. Oops. Uh, All right, so the next bin that um, we're going to talk about is this very beautiful looking um, wood bin with a lid and a door. And I think it looks really nice because of the, uh, the cedar wood that uh, Mick found. Um, Mick, would you like to say, um, talk about this or do you want me to introduce it? Sure, I, uh, I could talk about it. So, sure. so this bin was, was made from, com all of it was uh, reclaimed lumber. Um, so um, you do have to buy some hardware for it um, because there's some um, there's some hinges that you need, obviously for the doors and some latches, and then a handle for the for the roof. And and it, it takes a little bit longer to to build, but you actually get a you get a nicer bin. Uh, this one is a 34 inch it's a 34 inch cube, 
Uh, and that's because um, when you get the cedar planks, a lot of the a lot of the cedar planks that, that I get, uh, the ends have, have been nailed through, so I need to trim them down. And I believe we, we do have the plan for this on, on the Green Action Center website. The, um, the only we... thing is, we, it, it's really interesting, when I got the plan from the co-op, uh, they said, oh, we, we took the plan down because there was a mistake in it that said we use preserved lumber, uh, wood with preservative in it. And we got some, um, we got some comments about that. So, yeah, you, you shouldn't, I, I don't like to use preserved lumber or, or wood with preservative in, preservative in to make a, a compost bin. So uh, it's a nice bin. So if, if you've got, um, if you've got a nice property and you don't want loads of pallets like lying around on your property, then this is a really, really cool bin to make. The other thing is that you can join them together and make a multi-bin system. So you can actually join two together or three together. And um, if you were to join three together, the whole thing would only be eight feet long. So um, it, it would look really, really smart. So I like this bin. Yeah, I, I really like it too. It's really beautiful looking. Um, and just to let you know, um, we don't have the, the building plans on our website yet, but we will be sending the PDF to everyone who registered along okay. with the link to the recording. So. All right. Um, okay, then we, oh, I have a little slide about if you do purchase lumber, um, you, it, it'll show in the building plans that you need um, two by twos, two by fours, and one by sixes. And as Mick will describe in the video, because he used wood from a, um, from pallets, he actually had to cut the wood to size. So that makes it a little trickier, but it's still totally worth it. And something that we didn't show in the um, uh, the video is a, him assembling the the front, rear, and side frames of the compost bin. So these four frames right here. Um, so again, that is detailed in the the building plans. And as you can. See, Oopsie daisy. Oh dear. There we go. Um, as you can see here, here's the uh, the lid that he pre-made. And these are all the parts for the, the sides. And so we'll you'll see how he does it in the video. Okay, so this video is um, a little longer because it takes uh, there's much more in this bin is a little more involved. So it's around 13 minutes long. So I'll just stop sharing this screen so I can share the uh, the video. Okay, so this this compost bin that we're going to build uh, is a 34 inch cube. Uh, so uh, it gives you a good, um, nearly one cubic yard of, of compost. The, the uh, bin is built from a plan that was on the co-op hardware website, and we're going to upload this plan to the Green Action Centre website. So you'll need the following tools. Uh, you'll need a screwdriver. You need a drill. And, and it's best to pre-draw the lumber. So I pre-draw the, uh, the lumber with a countersink. Uh, you may need a saw to trim the lumber. Uh, you'll definitely need two pencils because you always lose one. A triangle, a tape measure, and then the hardware for the bin, you'll need four strap hinges. They come two to a pack. So these are, these are uh, four inch strap hinges. You'll need uh, two for the bin lid and two for the bin door at the bottom. The other thing you'll need is a handle to lift up the lid and two uh, safety hasps and latches. And these secure the bottom door to prevent the compost falling out. And there's one improvement to the bin which, which I've made uh, after a few complaints from people 
there's nothing to stop the door from pivoting all the way back so if it pivots all the way back sometimes it breaks the hinges so what i do is i secure the door uh, with a rope and two eyes and so we we can then secure the door so that it just leans back slightly and it doesn't go all the way back and i'll show everybody how to do that at the end so the compost bin plan comes with a cutting list if you're buying lumber from the lumber store then the lumber is going to be dimensionally accurate but this bin is made from used lumber and this this lumber has been milled uh, on my um, table saw so just be careful that if you're using lumber that you've you've made yourself some of the measurements might be off it's just a word of warning so the measure twice cut once principle really comes into play with used lumber so this bin is basically made up from four frames so the two side frames are exactly the same and then the back frame is slightly bigger like this and then the front frame doesn't has a, have a crossbar so to, to, to assemble it make the frames first so you make the four frames first and then we screw the frames together so when we assemble the frames together I pre-drill the holes so I pre-drill the holes with a countersink and this by, by countersinking the holes this prevents the wood spreading when you put in the screw in so we we assemble the frames so that the side pieces uh, screw into the front and back pieces okay the reason that we countersink is to prevent the wood spreading so we use a special countersink bit and drill and then this countersink here the angle of the countersink matches the angle of the screw so if you were to screw the screw in without putting the countersink drill through the wood would split and this is especially important with cedar and the outside slats of this bin are all made from cedar so every hole is countersinked So this is the completed frame and then the last thing we do for the frame this is upside down at the moment is we put a, a, a bottom board at the front of the frame so the bottom board will fit in there like this so the next thing uh, that we do is we put the trim boards around the base of the compost bin so we screw the the boards in this gives a nice finish to the compost bin and and prevents the bottom from rotting uh, a little bit Da, 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 da. okay now so now now that the base is all on we're going to flip the, the bin over and then we're going to attach the side slats we're, we're going to attach the side slats you need to pre-drill the slide so, side slat holes and, and the back and front slat holes as well the, the other thing that you need to do is if you've made if you've made the frame from reclaimed, lum, reclaimed lumber then I would suggest that you put a side slat on and check the length of it first this is where the saw may come in it may need to be um, smaller if it needs to be longer then uh, you're out of luck but if it needs to be smaller you can trim it down once you've got the first board secured you can cut all the other boards to the same length so here we have the first board going on it's lined up with the spacer at the top of the at the top of the bin and then we're going to screw this board in and then after that we're going to put the spacer in between the boards and and screw the rest of the boards down the side So the next slat we put the spacer board in on its edge and then we line up the edges of the board with the edge of the frame and then we screw this in this will give you the same distance between each slat all the way around the compost bin 
Okay, so we've put the slats all the way around the bin. On the front of the bin, we only put three slats because underneath those three stats, slats, we're gonna build a door for the bin. That's what we're gonna do next. So, so to get the door on, we turn the bin up onto its back like this. So this is the front door for accessing the compost. So to make the door, we cut two battens. These are the battens. And then we screw the door, the door slats to the battens from the front. So once we've built the door, we can take the door over to the bin and then place it on the bin ready to put the hinges on. And it's up to you which way you have the door swing. You can have it swinging left or you can have it swinging right. Totally your choice. Okay, so we place the two hinges in the center of the boards and I like to screw them onto the slats first, onto the boards first. And then once they're on the boards, then I screw them down the side. So we're gonna have this door hinging on the left-hand side and we'll have the clasps on the right-hand side. When we screw the screws in, make sure the screws uh, are not longer than the thickness of the board. What happens if, if you don't do that, you'll end up screwing the, ha the hinge straight onto the frame. And so we've got these half inch screws, which will secure the, which will secure the hinges to the, to the actual board because the board's half inches. And sometimes you can only get two in on the side. Sometimes it'll end up on the, but that's okay. Okay, there we have the door installed to access the compost. So on the, on the actual compost uh, access door, we're gonna put two safety hasps. So we're gonna screw the, uh, the hinge part of the safety hasp onto the door, and then, and then the eye is gonna go underneath there. And then that way we can secure the hasps with a temp peg or a nail or something, and that'll prevent the door swinging open uh, when it's full of compost. Okay, so now we have the two hasps installed on the compost bin door. This is for accessing the compost. And then you can secure the hasps with a nail or a temp peg or something just to stop the door flying open. So here we've put a nail in just to keep them, keep the door closed. So the door is made, uh, the, sorry, the lid of the compost bin is made from two battens and then the slats that make up the actual door. And there's a trick to doing this, which I like to use, is if you can imagine that these battens aren't screwed down at the moment onto the door, what I do is I put the first and the last slat. So the first and last slat, I rest into, in, into the bin on these supports. And then the battens, I slide them underneath and then I nail them with a nail gun. Once I've nailed them with a nail gun at each end, then the, the battens are held securely in place. And once the battens are held in place, then you can screw the other slats across the top. Okay. So then we can screw the rest of the slats across the top. So what, what I do is, because uh, this was just made from really scabby lumber, the lid. So you could just roughly space the slats as you want them. Just like that. Okay, so now we've put the other three slats to make up the lid for the compost bin. And it's up to you whether you have a space in between them or not. I like to have a space in between my slats, so I've got some odd pieces of cedar here. So we can now put the slats on the batten and they'll stay in place and then we can screw the slats down. So the last couple of things we need to do to the bin is we need to put the remaining two strap hinges uh, on the, onto the uh, lid so that we can raise the lid up and down. And then we're gonna put a handle on the front here, just around here, so that we can uh, use that to open the lid. And then my top tip is then we're gonna add a string with a couple of eyes and that will stop the lid falling all the way back.
Okay, so this this is my top tip for the for the bin. If if you let the bin lid fly all the way back like this, sometimes it rips the hinges off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw an eyelet into here and then an eyelet into the frame here. So use two eyelets like this and then I'll join them together with a piece of string and then we can adjust it so that the bin lid just tilts slightly backwards. That way it doesn't put pressure on the hinges. Okay, so we just thread the string through the two eyelets and then just tie it off however you want using one of your Boy Scout knots. And then what I do is I adjust it so that the bin lid is just just going slightly backwards, so like this, so it's not putting any pressure on the hinges. And then I'm, we're going to tie off this one as well. That way, when you close the bin lid, the string will go inside and the lid stays flush. So this is the finished bin. The whole bin has been made from reclaimed lumber. So all of the slats, uh, the, the uh, door, both doors, the, they're all made from reclaimed cedar and the frame was was made from reclaimed spruce so the only uh, actual cost for this bin was the hardware so the bin if you if you're a competent woodworker you can uh, make one of these bins in probably an hour and a half to two hours it doesn't take too long okay fantastic and that's how you make the second bin yeah no that looks that's great i'm definitely inspired i think other people are too they're saying great video we did just have um a couple quick questions mm -hmm. um one of them says um they're wondering what uh our uh current i guess communal composting looks like in Winnipeg. I guess they're so inspired. I'm wondering how many people compost here. And that's, uh, <laughs> um, we don't have um, community pickup, unfortunately, here in Winnipeg. They, they said they come from Vancouver. Um, so we don't have community compost pickup. Uh, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is a pilot underway. Uh, it's currently in uh, several neighborhoods around the city. So they're testing the pilot. It's for a total of two years. And um, after that, um, we're going to see what the results are. And, and hopefully that'll mean that could go citywide. Um, we do have community compost sites listed on our website. I can just toss in the link right here for everyone to, to check out. Um, so if you don't have access to um, your own bin in your own backyard, if you live in an apartment or you just don't have the space, uh, that's a good option because um, these bins can also go there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but other than that, no, we don't. We're, we're getting there, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. It. And the only other option, if folks want to receive um organic waste pickup from their houses mm -hmm. or condos of our apartments if they live in the correct neighborhoods um, there is compost winnipeg yes. that um, you can pay for their service to come and pick up your organic waste um, they're actually a social enterprise of ours and there's no other company in in winnipeg that will do that so that is an option too for people in winnipeg Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Oh, thanks, Leah. Yeah. Um, and one more quick question, just mm -hmm. with um, the screws with the bins. Uh, does it matter which screws or what type of screws you use? Um, I think they're uh, just curious about do with, with rusting out, uh, weathering over time, because you know, there's debate over, you know, coated, you know, with decking that lasts longer, but that's coated, right? Like that's like the, the treated sort of thing, or do you use, yeah. What, what are your thoughts on that? So, so I can answer that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think using deck screws is fine uh, because the okay. screw is going into the, into the wood, not, it's not touching the compost, okay. but, but any, any good general purpose uh, wood screw uh, with a Robertson's head, works just fine uh, for the bin. 
you, you don't have to use screws. If, if you've got a really good nail gun or a really good stapler, um, uh, like an air, air nail gun or an air stapler with wide enough staples, you could actually staple the bin together. Um, I prefer screwing it together. Uh, the reason for that is that if I need to replace a slat, I can just undo the screws. I yeah. find that if, I'm, if it's got six or 10 staples in there, then sometimes it'll split the wood. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I just prefer to use the screws and, and, and any screw really is, is um, good enough. And buy them from a reliable hardware store and you should be fine. Great. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Any more questions or is that it? That's or... so far, yeah. No, you've been doing a great job at, of explaining. So I don't think there's <laughs> many um, questions to wonder about because you're so clear, so. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to put the um, the link to the page on our website where we have our bin plans. Um, I'm going to do that quickly. And um, the, the, the building plan for the simple uh, wood pallet bin is on this web uh, web page. And I actually Perfect. messed up the compost. It's compost. What if we got CA? I, I accidentally put .com. So there's the proper way. Oh, for compost. <laughs> not, not uh, com, yes. CA. Yeah. My computer is being slow right now, of course. Okay. Uh, building. Here we go. Okay. Let's put that in the chat box. Okay, so that is the link for um, where you can find all the, the bin plans. And as I mentioned before, um, in our email that we'll send to everyone who registered, um, it will include the PDF which of the building plan for the, uh, the cedar compost bin. And that's, uh, that's, that's a wrap. Um, I hope you all enjoyed um, the videos and I hope they're helpful and I hope that you're inspired to go and uh, build your own compost bins, either those ones or other ones as well. Um, Mick, do you have any, do you have a compost bin that's your favorite before we go? I was going to ask you that. Uh... A type of compost bin that you like the best? Uh, you know, I, I built mine at my house from uh, old pallets and then I built a wire cage for the for the um, for the leaves. And then I invested in a Vessi's uh, um, roto composter. It's a Mantis roto composter, which is uh, it's the big two drum system, which is at my house. And and I like that the roto composter. I, I like to, to, to turn that and see the compost. It finishes the compost quicker. So mm. I like that that one, but you know, it's uh, my theory on this is is just to get started. Um, like pick one that you like, build it, and then just get started. You know, um, don't put it off. Just just go for it. Yeah, you really can't do anything wrong as long as you're diverting your food scraps from the landfill. You're you're winning. You're right. you're doing something right. Yeah. Like, right. and right. if your compost pile dries up, it doesn't matter. It's eventually yeah. going to decompose. Nature does its thing. So, you know, and 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 use the compost helpline. We we the, there is a compost helpline. It's very effective. You know, if you've got problems, call call Green Action Centre and they'll help you. It's uh, you're not alone in this. There, there's there's a, a wealth of knowledge out there. Yes, yes. and oh, right oops, there. I'm 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 covering there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so you can call us or uh, shoot us an email and uh, ask us any questions that you have. And if we can't answer them, we find out the answer somehow. So um, we do have we're there quick for one. you. What was Before that? There we go. There is one quick one. I think oh. uh, Maureen was curious, Mick, how quick do you get compost with your favorite uh, bin there? Okay, so I can get, so in the roto composter, I, I can get compost within a year. Um, and, and so um, if, if uh, I start early enough in the season, there, there will be finished compost in it at the end of the year. Um, it, it has to be managed a little bit 
more than you would a, um, a normal compost bin. But, uh, but I have had compost uh, out of it from within a year. There, there is compost, finished compost in that bin now, which was started at the beginning in May. So wow. I know that wow. it's nice. good compost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, and, and a quick question for Maureen. She, she needs to, <laughs> to call or contact me about the bin building workshop, which, uh, we're, which we're supposed to be doing somewhere. We'll get okay. you connected. <laughs> yes, we have another we have another master composter on this yeah. webinar, watching yeah. the webinar. Mm -hmm. Oh, and um, Mick, can we mention that Mick actually um, will build these bins and um, sell them. So if anyone's interested in buying um, that cedar compost bin, mm -hmm. he can do that for you. Yep. And if you want his uh, contact information, you can just um, send an email to compost at greenactioncenter.ca and um, we can send you his, uh, his contact info. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Great. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Have, Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.